Merry Christmas, Manchester! Merry Christmas, Manchester. We're all in this together. Merry Christmas, Manchester. I hope you get good stuff for, you for Christmas. Hello, my name's Stephen Gidwainer. Hope you're all having a wonderful, wonderful Christmas. And I'm delighted to be here today at 53 to helping raise money for Wood Street Mission by reading work from 1Y Year 7 at Stockport Grammar School. Sharing and Caring by Alexi Whitaker and Amelia Handley Gibbs. This Christmas will be different for most of us this year because of the effects of the virus. Many people will have lost their jobs, some their homes, and many more will have the same presents or dinner they are used to. But the thing that affects all of us is that we can't see our wider family. And that's heartbreaking. We, like many others, will be thinking about our loved ones this year, but also those who don't have the luxury of being able to text or call. Some people find it very hard to not see people, and anyone who lives alone is already struggling. No one should be alone, but especially at Christmas. If you can, spare a moment to check on your neighbour. Say hello to a stranger in the street. Smile at the person next to you in the supermarket queue. That might make all the difference to someone's day. Be your own little light in the darkness. Thank you to Lexi Whitaker and Amelia Hanley Gibbs for that lovely story. This story, it's the most wonderful time of the year by Chloe Harmer. Christmas is a hopeful and joyous time of year for me. Firstly, I enjoy seeing my family and friends. We get together and have a laugh and a giggle. It's my job to hand out the colourfully wrapped presents from under the twinkling tree. Of course I enjoy unwrapping them, but more important to me is seeing my family's faces light up when they open my gift to them. Secondly, I love the run up to the big day. Decorating the house has always been and will always be an exciting, sparkly time for me. Some people would say that our decorations are haphazard, but I don't care. Even the tiniest bauble holds a memory for me of past Christmases of the fun we had. Finally, I don't even mind when it's all over. It's like a door opening up to a new year full of hopes, dreams and wishes. A fresh start. And this year, we need this more than ever. That's what Christmas is for me. And a big thank you to Chloe Harmer for that wonderful story. Such wonderful hopes and messages in them stories. And after this year, we genuinely do need a bit of hope and love. I hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful Christmas. Hi everyone, I'm Julie Esmond Alsh and uh, this is my new best friend, Albie, the 53-2 dog. And we're here to read a Christmas story for you in aid of the wonderful Wood Street Mission. Christmas can be a really, really wonderful time, but it can also be a really, really difficult time, especially if you're living in poverty and hardship. Wood Street Mission has for years been helping the poorest people in Greater Manchester. And I'm delighted to be reading this story in aid of them today. So if you'd like to donate after hearing the story, please do at 532.com forward slash write Christmas. I think you should be able to see the link on screen now. And so to the story. This is Meeting Santa by Anne Price. When I was little, Christmas really started with a visit to Santa. We weren't really sure which one was the real one because there were more than one around the town. My mum called him, called them his helpers. And we saw quite a few over the years. Some just didn't convince us. The one in the garden centre looked far too young and you could tell his beard was false. And he had trainers on. Dirty ones too. And everyone knows Santa does not wear trainers. The Santa in the big department store in town was different. He was older and wore a red cloak trimmed with white fur. He sat on a gold throne at the end of a twinkly grotto and I entered that glistening wonderland with mum and my brother and headed towards him, filled with excitement. But he spoke with a Liverpool accent, just like my Uncle Pat, and I knew Santa couldn't possibly sound like that. Not if he came from this North Pole. 
There were pretty girls dressed as fairies and they gave us presents, which we unwrapped straight away. Mine was a Harry Potter backpack. And my brother, who was in his wheelchair, got plastic roller skates. Flaming insensitive! I can still hear my mum's raised voice echoing round the grotto as she accosted an embarrassed elf. We never did go there again. Despite Joe leaving with the latest action man to compensate for their insensitivity. But the Santa in our little shopping precinct was different and had a little bit of magic about him. He sat on a sleigh with real reindeer at the front. They didn't go anywhere as they were fenced off and you could go in and stroke them. This Santa had a special twinkle in his eye and a kind smiley face, didn't he, Albie? Yes, covered in real white whiskers. And he was so smart. He wore black shiny boots, a bright red suit and the whitest gloves you can imagine. Just felt like he was the real one. I remember I told him I wanted to be clever. It was when I was struggling at school and before they understood what the word dyslexic meant. He looked straight at me and told me that I was bright and could shine like a star. You have to believe in yourself, he said. You are clever. Don't ever doubt it. And I looked into those twinkling eyes and believed him. He gave me a little silver star and told me to keep it and look at it if I ever felt worried. It became my lucky charm and was always in my pocket when I did tests and exams at school and even later at university. I was thinking about him last year as I was bringing out the Christmas decorations at work. I've been at the care home for five years and as well as my usual duties I coordinate the artwork and help to make sure the place looks right throughout the year. So I'm the one who sticks giant Easter eggs and bunnies on the walls and windows every spring. I hang poppies around the building on Remembrance Day and Christmas is my speciality. <laughs> I help to turn the place into something that resembles Santa's Grotto. It's all tastefully done though. Every year I make giant snowflakes with the residents and I love seeing their joy as we put them up in the windows with lights. It's a special time. And although some of our ladies and gentlemen don't sometimes engage, they seem to feel some of the magic as they listen to the music and perhaps some of the memories of Christmas gone by come back. I like to think so. As I unravelled the lights, I was thinking about how I could learn even more about the mind and memory. There was a university course I wanted to apply for, but I have problems with confidence and hadn't sent off the forms. It was an issue that I felt I'd just have to deal with in my own time. Our home is made up of two parts, one for people who may need a bit more care and live with us, and another for those who, for one reason or another, stay for a short while. They're free to come and go at will. George was one of these. He came to us at the beginning of December while waiting to move into a new home. I mean, you shouldn't have favourites, I know, but I liked him straight away. He was the sort of man you'd, you'd want to be your granddad. Calm, friendly and polite. He had a smile for everyone. Immaculately presented. He always wore a shirt and a tie to have his meals with the other residents and all the staff talked to him immediately. He had a unique gift of getting people to open up and then just listening. Even more, one of our ladies who liked to walk around the corridor with his suitcase in hand would sit and have a chat with him and then return to her room and unpack as if she'd arrived to start a new chapter in her life. It was when I was decorating yet another Christmas tree that George offered to help. He took out the tinsel and as I looked into his eyes, I thought of the Santa who'd given me the star. With his white beard, he reminded me of our Christmas visits. I told him outright, George, don't laugh, but you look so much like a Santa I met in the precinct when I was little. He told me I was clever. Well, he was right, he said, smiling. 
and I have been Santa before on quite a few occasions and I always took it very seriously. You can't disappoint children. We talked about how he'd enjoyed playing the role and how he insisted on getting the whole outfit right, even down to wearing white gloves. I could see the joy in his eyes as he reminisced and I wished he was my Santa, but that was far too long ago. As we chatted, I made up my mind to bring some magic back to him too, especially as his children and grandchildren lived abroad. The week before Christmas, we usually get Aaron, our deputy manager, to dress up as Santa and we have a party where he gives each of our residents a present. I love to see the smile on our ladies and gentlemen's faces and hope they can grasp some memories of seeing Santa when they were small. I suggested to Aaron that this might be the year to let someone else play the part of Santa and told him about George. He immediately agreed that it would be wonderful for both him and the residents. When we asked George if he would do it, his face lit up and he said yes without hesitation. But when Aaron brought the costume to his room, his face fell. Admittedly, the Santa suit had seen better days, but I honestly didn't think it would matter. The, the gloves must be white and, and the suit should be the brightest of reds. Santa can't look shabby, he said, looking crestfallen. Aaron took out his phone to look for something, but George wasn't having any of it. Let me call my friend. He's the one who has my things. He'll send something over. Santa has to look the business. It clearly meant a lot to George. So we agreed that if something could be organised, we'd wait. The following day I was off, but when I returned to work, George was clearly delighted that his friend had literally delivered. When I knocked on the door of his room, he was sitting in his chair in full costume, looking transformed and more like Santa than I ever imagined Santa could look. He just smiled at me and said, thank you. And on the afternoon of the Christmas party, as our ladies and gentlemen applauded the carol singers, we heard the bell ringing from down the corridor. And I'll never forget the look of joy on everyone's face as Santa George entered the room and with the help of our lovely carers handed out presents. They say a smile takes years off you. Well, it certainly did with our lot. The duty staff said that everyone slept well that night, which is a rarity. The next day I was off, which was good as, conversely, I spent all night thinking about my future. I had a lot to reflect on and in the morning I decided that I would apply for the university course. I felt my confidence was there all along, I just, just hadn't realised it. I filled in the forms and sent them off. On handover the following day, Erin filled me in on everything in our unit. The main news was that the staff had been shocked to find that George had left. Of course, we knew he was a temporary resident, but no one had expected his departure to be so soon. Apparently, a message had been left on the answer phone to say that accommodation had become available earlier than expected. His friend would be coming to take him home. The wardrobe was empty. The cases were gone. All the necessary forms were filled in and left on his desk, along with thank you letters to each member of the staff, including the cleaners, the lady in the laundry room and the kitchen staff. Clearly, there was no issue of concern for his safety. The thing is, no one had seen him leave. Nobody on the staff, that is. Mo had seen him though, and Vera and Sid. He was wearing his Santa outfit, they said. Of course, everyone agreed, but no one took that seriously, as it would have been impossible. The Santa suit had been left folded neatly on the bed, with a note attached. For Aaron. Remember, Santa is always immaculately dressed. There was an envelope addressed to me too, a note inside. I read it. You have the confidence to do whatever you want. Keep on believing. And there was something else inside the envelope. A silver star. I keep it with my first star. 
They were in my pocket when I sat the university exams and when I picked up the diploma for advanced studies in elderly mental health earlier this year. I love to think that he's in Lapland, being Santa. But wherever George is, and whoever he really is, he taught me to believe in myself. And for a few weeks, helped us all to feel the real magic of Christmas. The end. Thank you everyone. Have a lovely and peaceful Christmas and a better 2021. From me and Albie. Goodbye.